Blockchain technology has long been known for its decentralized structure, immutable record keeping, and perhaps most importantly, its emphasis on security. Their design makes hacking nearly impossible. But, as with most things, nothing is 100% safe from hackers. Today, we're talking about the 51% attack. Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go-to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're breaking down the 51% attack. What exactly is it? How does it work? Can it be prevented? We'll cover all this and more. So let's get into it. So what exactly is a 51% attack? A 51% attack refers to an attack on a blockchain where either a single miner or a group of miners take control of more than 50% of a network's hash rate. Hash rate refers to the sum of all computing power committed to mining and transaction processing on blockchains that utilize proof-of-work consensus. Successful attackers can prevent new transactions from being confirmed and modify the sequence in which new transactions are processed. It also enables them to rewrite parts of the blockchain and reverse their own transactions, resulting in double spending. In order to pull off a 51% attack however, a few things must be accomplished by the hackers. First, an attacker would need to take control of a simple majority of the peer-to-peer -peer network of a blockchain. Unfortunately for smaller networks, this can be achieved relatively easily. For larger networks however, it can be very difficult, if not essentially impossible. We'll cover this a little bit more in a bit. Second, the attacker would start covertly mining blocks on a different blockchain. This second chain operates concurrently with the one used by the rest of the network's nodes to mine. The legitimate 49% or less of the network would not be informed of the mining of the new blocks and in fact, would not even be aware that the alternate blockchain exists. Third, the hackers transfer a specific amount of coins or tokens. The most common method is for attackers to move funds to a centralized exchange where they can be liquidated or swapped for other assets. It's important to note that this transaction only occurs on the legitimate version of the chain and is not acknowledged by the fraudulent one. In the next step, the attackers mine blocks as quickly as possible on the private chain. Again, this is done without informing the rest of the network. Because the attackers have more hashing power, they can mine blocks faster than the other 49% of the network combined. The false chain continues to develop, eventually surpassing the original chain in length. Fifth, the attackers inform the remainder of the network's nodes about the forged chain. The remainder of the network is obligated to accept the attacker's fraudulent blocks because of the longest chain rule, which considers the longest version of a blockchain as the legitimate version of the chain. Honest nodes assume their version of the chain is faulty and convert to the attacker's chain. Finally, the attackers are free to spend funds again because they forced the network to accept the illegitimate chain on which their transaction from step 3 never took place. The funds are sent a second time, swapped for other coins, and then liquidated, washed, or both, by the attacker with the rest of the network unaware of what has happened. There's good news for some, and bad news for others regarding 51% attacks though. The good news for larger networks such as Bitcoin and Ethereum is that it is highly unlikely, if not impossible, to pull off a 51% attack. The cost of performing a 51% attack rises significantly, with the network's hash rate. The attackers would need to incur an enormous cost in order to gain the hashing power needed to take over larger networks. That would mean more computing power and more electricity, a cost that could perhaps not be worth the reward. For smaller networks however, there would be smaller costs and computing power needed to take over a network. Unfortunately, this leaves smaller networks more susceptible to these types of attacks. There have been a number of 51% attacks over the years, with notable victims including Bitcoin Gold, Ethereum Classic, and the Verge blockchain. In 2018, Bitcoin Gold was attacked and hackers were able to make off with nearly $18 million in assets. Two years later, in 2020, another attempt was made, but was fortunately thwarted by the Bitcoin Gold team. 
In 2019, Ethereum Classic came under attack and hackers were able to steal nearly $1.1 million in assets. The Verge was attacked in April of 2018 and hackers were successful in extracting over a million dollars. They were attacked again the following month in May, and the attackers made off with an additional $1.75 million worth of assets. As if that weren't enough bad news for The Verge, in February of 2021, it was discovered that they had fell victim to yet another attack. In this instance, the hackers were able to reorganize or make changes to transaction history to an astounding 560,000 blocks. In a short period of time, 200 days worth of transactions disappeared. It was a devastating blow for a cryptocurrency that prided itself on security, anonymity, and privacy. With all this in mind, can a 51% attack be prevented? In a number of ways, the answer is yes. In the case of Bitcoin Gold, the team was diligent in discovering the attack early on. As a result, they were able to take measures to prevent the attack from becoming successful. The team notified mining pools and exchanges and circulated an update that created a checkpoint. The checkpoint prevented the hackers from taking over the chain. Perhaps the best way to prevent a 51% attack altogether though, is a change to the consensus mechanism. In particular, either upgrading a network to proof-of-stake, or creating a network that utilizes the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism to begin with. Proof-of-stake, unlike proof-of-work, does not rely on hash rate, computing power or miners to achieve consensus. Instead, owners stake their coins and in turn, are given the right to check new blocks of transactions and add them to the blockchain. There are other benefits to proof of stake as well. Because this type of consensus mechanism does not require the use of computing power and the massive amount of electricity needed to run those computers, many believe that proof of stake is significantly more beneficial to the environment. In wrapping up, here are the key things to keep in mind regarding 51% attacks. The attacks occur when a hacker or group of hackers take control of more than 50% of a blockchain network's hash rate. During the attack, the hackers will create a false blockchain that runs alongside the network's legitimate chain. Once the attack is complete, hackers will be able to double spend and liquidate or wash hacked coins. Over the years there have been a number of attacks on various networks with the most notable ones occurring against Bitcoin Gold, Ethereum Classic, and The Verge. The best way to prevent 51% attacks is by utilizing the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism rather than proof-of-work. And that's all we have for today's video. We hope you got a good understanding of the 51% attack, how it occurs, and how it can be prevented. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining and we'll catch you in the next video.